We wonder about what the economy is going to do next. How high gas prices are going to go. How, how, how expensive milk is going to get. We worry about the war on terror. And, and now it seems like it's cycling back. It's hit home again. And we wonder, can we even go out to a movie? Can we even go, go run a marathon? Can we even just go out in public without something happening? We worry about these things, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We worry about our personal lives, too. Yeah. Lord, what kind of future will I have? Yeah. Will, will, will things be better in the future than they are right now? Yeah. How long will I live? Amen. Do we think about that? Come on now. Will I get some dreaded disease that Amen. they had not found a cure for? Yeah. We wonder about these things and we, we worry about these things. And, and it's almost natural to have an element of doubt. Yes. But, somebody say but. but. In the spiritual realm. That's with the world now. But in the spiritual realm, God doesn't want us to have any doubts about who we are. Any doubts about the future. So, y'all, there's not much we can do about the future. We can plan for it, we can prepare for it, we can say what we think will happen, what we want to happen, but we don't know for sure. Amen. Prove it to me, Pastor. You got Proverbs 27 and 1? Let's look at Proverbs 27 and 1. While we worry about the future, here's what the Bible says. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. The only one that knows what the next 24 hours will entail for us is God Almighty. So while we're sitting here worrying about the future, Bible says you should you, you, you shouldn't worry about it because you don't know what tomorrow will bring forth. Look at Philippians 4.19. We worry about provision. We worry about things being taken care of in our life. And while it's good, it's, it's good and it's right for us to, to make plans for the future, to, to get things prepared, to keep our business affairs straight. Yeah. The word lets us know to worry about it is a sin. Right. It says, 419 says, but my God yeah. shall supply all your need yeah. according to whose riches? Yeah. His riches in glory. So when we replace our faith and start worrying, we're doing God's job. So the future is going to do what the future is going to do, y'all. The best thing we can do is have faith and trust in God Almighty. Because this word says that if I really trust in him, then he will take care of me. You're talking to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor God will take care of you. But when it comes to the spiritual realm, it's sad to report that some people just don't know, just aren't sure whether or not they have eternal life, wow. whether or not they have salvation. And God doesn't want any of us to be unsure about where we will spend eternity. The Bible teaches that we can know for sure. And this, this, this book, 1 John, and I, I encourage you to read it. Read, read the epistle of 1 John. Short book, short book, but it's powerful. And in it, it contains over 40 <laughs> verses that lets us know that we can be sure that we have eternal life. 1 John 2 and 3 says, now by this, by what Jesus has done, we know him. 1 John 2 and 5 says, by this, we know that we are in him by what Jesus has done on the cross. 1 John 3 and 14 says, by this, we know that we have passed from life unto death when we believe in Jesus Christ. 1 John 3 and 19 says that, and by this, we know that we are of the truth of God. 1 John 3, 24 says, and by this we can know for sure that if we abide in him, he will abide in him. Is anybody glad about that? That you can know for sure that what Jesus did up on Calvary's cross is good enough for you. And finally, 1 John 4, 13 says that by this we know 
that we abide in him and he abides in us. Yes. So we can know without the, beyond the shadow of a doubt who Jesus is and what he has done for us and that we can be sure that if we die tonight that we'll wake up in eternity with the Lord. Two ways, very briefly, two ways to know for sure Two ways we know. M many other ways, but I just want to focus on two ways for us to know for sure that we are saved. There was a story is told of a, of a Scottish man. And he was getting older and getting getting older in age and 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 he had just found the Lord and, and he was excited about his walk. And, and he would go around from town to town and from place to place telling people that he was saved. And one day, one of his friends asked him, he said, he said, well, you're always talking about uh, knowing that you're saved. He said, he said, I don't believe uh, you can know for sure. He says, how do you know that you are saved for sure? He said, well, I'll tell you how I know. He said, I was there when it happened. So that's how I know that I know how to get there. Well, tell me, neighbor, tell me, get it out of church. You get it. I was there. I was there when it happened. So that's how I know that I am saved. Saints, we don't have to go any further. We don't have to ask anybody else. We don't have to check with anybody else. You ought to know for yourself that you are saved. Tell your neighbor, you ought to know for yourself. You ought to know for yourself. As a matter of fact, God wants it to be that way. He doesn't want you to have to check with the pastor or check with the deacons or check with somebody else. He wants you to know him for yourself. So two ways for us to know for sure. First of all, look at verses 11 and 12. You have it there on your outline. His work, his work makes me sure that I'm saved. Watch this now. It says, and this is the record, that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Yes. He that have the Son have life. And he that have not the Son of God have not life. Amen. Look at Romans 5, 8. You got it there on your paper. It says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for who? Us. He died for us. We have it settled right here in the Bible. We don't even have to go any further. Paul affirms it that Jesus up on Calvary's cross, what did Jesus do? He took our place. Things that should have been ours, sins that should have been ours, a debt that should have been ours to pay. Is anybody glad that Jesus hung up on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour? He could have called legions of angels to come to his rescue, but he said he stayed there to said it is finished. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't sound glad today. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad today. Yeah. Because Jesus took all of your sins up there on that cross. And where we should have been sacrificing bulls and cows and, and oxen, we should have had an altar sitting out here all blooded. And, and you can't be saved until you come and give your offering. Is anybody glad about that? Yeah. Oh, that sound nasty, y'all. That sounds like some dirty business there. Every, 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 every month or, or every quarter, we ask you to come and bring a bull or a goat or a lamb or a ram or, or a rabbit or a bird or whatever you can find and, and let's sacrifice it out here. Is anybody glad today that Jesus became that sacrifice? That we don't have to do that. So when we think about the blood of Christ, it was an atoning work, first of all. First of all, it atoned. In other words, it satisfied the debt that we had when we became sinners in this world. And when did that happen, Pastor? It happened when you was born. Yeah. We were born into a world of sin. Yeah. So Jesus Christ's work came to atone us, to bring us back into a right relationship with God. Yeah. But the next thing that that blood was, was it was acceptable by God the Father. Yes. How do you know? Because when Jesus was up on that cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes. But as he went through that process and his last word, it is finished, that let us know. That let us know that it was accepted by God the Father.
Their leaders are, are off on a mountain somewhere, the remains of in a jar, in a urn somewhere, right. in a catechism, in a cone. But if you look for Jesus, right. you'll right. never find him. Because Jesus got up with all power in his hands. Was well, anybody glad about that? We have proof. They came looking for him and couldn't find him because he came back a couple of days later and he let us know. He said, come on. He said, he had, had old Dalton Thomas with him. He said, come here, boy. You, you don't believe this me? He said, look, feel, feel the nail print. Feel, feel where they put the nails in. Look at my feet. We have proof, proof positive that Jesus got up out of that grave. But then the great thing about it is that he could have just stopped right there. He would have had a religion right there. But the Bible lets me know that he uh, went up into heaven. And he said, just like you see me going up, he says, I'm coming back again to get, to get my bride, to get those who believe in me. Oh, y'all, that sounds like some good news right there. That's what Jesus did for us. You got Romans 10, 13 there on your paper. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be Oh, great God Almighty. Now, how do we get that wrong? It's so plain, y'all. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when you call upon his name, you are saved. When you believe that he is the son of the living God, that he died for your sins, guess what? You are saved. Does anybody have to come and put any oil on you? Anybody have to come and confirm with you? No, uh-uh. It's between you and God. When you believe it, then God settles it in heaven. Is anybody glad about that? You don't have to check with any counsel. You don't have to come back here and let uh, none of that. It says for whosoever, and it doesn't matter where you are, when it is, if you call upon the name of the Lord in the midnight hour, guess what? He'll hear you. If you call on him at 6 o'clock in the morning, he'll hear you. Oh, is anybody glad? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But saints, can I stop here and do a little teaching now? See, because it's real important. Because nowadays, just like in Christ's days, you got a lot of people teaching and telling a lot of different ways to get to heaven. But we know from the record that there's only one way for us to get to heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ. Flip your paper over there. Flip, 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 flip your paper over there. And let's look at some ways that people are trying to get to heaven. First of all, you have the first one there. Salvation by religion. Oh, can I talk about this for a minute? Salvation by religion. You know these people, you, you hear them say stuff like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not real religious. And they say it like religion is the only thing that matters. Y'all, can I tell you, there are a lot of crazy religions out there. A lot of religion based on Christianity that are out there. And if you don't have it, the center of your religion, Jesus, the Christ, then your religion ain't nothing but words. All right, all right. But some people want to have salvation by religion. Religion ain't the only thing. All right, yeah. Oh, they used to sing a song, I got good religion. But if it don't have Jesus in it, it ain't nothing ain't but nothing. words, y'all. Look at it, look at look at it. Salvation by sincerity. And these people, you know them, you heard them, they'll say, well, as long as you sincere, as long as you mean it, then you can be saved. But see, there's been a lot of good meaning folks who've been sincere about their religion who have not gone to heaven, who have missed the mark. There have been a lot of charismatic leaders across the time, across age, who would get people to do what they say, and they're not following Jesus Christ, then the Bible says that they're not saved. Because by only one name can man, woman, boy, child be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. Then you got salvation by, by service. Oh, you, you, you know yourself. Don't, 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 don't wiggle too much now. If it hits you, it just let it hit you. Salvation by service. You know these people that say, well, I do this and I do that. I go here and, and I go there. But, but let me tell you, if you just do it just for you, then it, it's nothing but service. Because I, I look at Mary and Martha. 
Yes. Martha was back trying to get everything ready, get get nice business. And Jesus had come had come to their house, and he said, "Well, Martha, you running around doing this, that, and the other. I appreciate it, but the best thing you can do is sit at my feet. Come on, man. Salvation by service. Yes. God wants us to serve. Yes. He wants us to do this and to do that. But service should be a byproduct of your salvation. Yes. You yes. ought to serve Him because you've been saved." Yes. And then, yeah. then, then you got salvation by subtraction. Oh, you, you know these folks, don't you? They, they, they'll say stuff like, well, well, see, uh, it's what I haven't done. I, 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 ain't, I ain't done this, and, and I ain't done that, and, and, and I, I ain't been this, and, and I ain't been that. So, so, so God won't hold that really against me. He, 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 won't, he won't. I can be saved by that. Again, if you don't have Jesus, it ain't no good. Then you got then salvation by ritual. Oh, you, you know these people. Right. Sa salvation by ritual. Uh -huh. Well, see, long as I've been baptized, yeah. and you know, you know, I've been baptized. And <laughs> see, right. but baptism oh, doesn't save you. You have to come to Jesus before you get baptized. You got to know who Jesus is. Baptism will not save you. Amen. Like one old preacher said when they used to baptize people in the creek. He said, you can be baptized to all the frogs in the creek know you. All you're doing is getting wet. If you don't have Jesus, all you're doing is getting wet. Then salvation by heritage. You know these folks, don't you? They'll say stuff, well, see, see my mama and my grandmama and my great-grandmama and great-great-grandmama. You know, they came to St. Paul. They, they were a member of the missionary. You know, so, so see, because they did all that, you know, then I know I'm all right. The devil is a lie. Because God don't have no grandchildren. You got to come to him for yourself. You can't ride on the coattails of nobody. You got to come to him for yourself. And then there's salvation by, by comparison. Oh, you know these folks don't. Don't wiggle too much, man. It's you. You know, I'm better than so and so. You know, yeah, I got it going on. I, 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 I don't do what, what you want to call it do. You know, you know, we don't we don't do that. You know, we we are saved because because see if you look at them and you and you look look at me. Look at me, look at me now. Look at me. Look at me. If you look at me and then you look at them, then they see it, there's no comparison. Salvation by comparison. Y'all the devil is a lie. The Bible says that there are only two ways to help. The first way is that when you are born, if you perfect all the days of your life, from the cradle to the grave, and raise your hand if you've been perfect all of your life. None of us can be there. The Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one, except the person of Jesus Christ. The second way that we can get to heaven and it's written down is to have belief, faith, and trust in the person of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You're talking to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. He's the only way. And finally, the second point. We can know, we can know for sure by his word, <laughs> by his word, yeah. by his word, yeah. his work and his word, mm -hmm. his work and his word. John was written. Yeah. He said that you might know. Forty times he tells us that you might know that you are saved. Yeah. And see, now, one thing about the Bible, God said that He's not a man that he should lie. Yeah, nor the yeah. son of man that he has to repent for anything. Yeah. So if God said it in his word, yeah. whatever he said in his word, he has got to back it up. Yeah. He has got to make his word true. So if his word says that you and I are saved through belief in Jesus Christ, guess what? It's a done deal. Yeah. God can't lie. Yeah. God says that we are children of God. Because of our witness, because of our testimony, because of our belief in Jesus Christ. Yes. Survey. How many of you were born physically? How many of you been born? Raise your hand if you've been born. Physically, if you've been born. Come on, raise your hand. Some of y'all not sure.
Come on, raise it. If you've been born, you've been born. You can taste, you can, you can smell. Yeah. And somewhere, somewhere, watch this now, somewhere there is a record of your birth. Yeah. I've been doing research on my heritage and, and my and ancestry.com, and, and they got records, they got records go all the way back to the 1600s. Yeah. Somewhere, I don't know where it is, but somewhere they got, if you were born a slave, they got a record of you. Somewhere there was a record that you were born. So not only do you know that you're born because you, you, you're alive, you can feel yourself, but yeah. somewhere there is a record that you have been born. Yeah. If somebody asks you, are, are you born? You don't have to think about it, do you? Yeah. Huh? If you, if you, if you, if you don't have to think about it. Right. Okay? You, you don't say, well, I think I'm born. Or, or, or wait a minute, let me see. Uh -huh. Let me see. What, what? You know that you've been born yeah. the same way. That we were born physically. Yeah. God wants us to know that we have been born again spiritually. Yeah. All right. So we got a record that to let us know that we have been born again. Yeah. Somewhere there's a record written that says that you've been born. Yeah. But somewhere in the spirit realm, there's a record that God says that when you believe in Jesus, that you have been have been born again. Now, how do we know? How do we know? How do we know? How do we know if we have Jesus in us? How do we know? See, because some people play on the fears of other folks. And they, and if you're not sure about your salvation, they'll tell you you gotta do this and you gotta do that. You gotta pay this money and send me some money for the prayer cloth. And, and if you send me this fund and that fund, if you go to this retreat and that retreat, but the devil is a liar. Yeah, you can know for yourself yeah, from the word of God yeah. that you are saved. You don't have to ask anybody. You don't have to pay anybody. You don't have to go here or go there. This word says that you are saved. Is anybody glad about that? Yeah. Married folks, raise your hand. Quick, 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 married folks. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Raise your hand, married folks. Let me pick on the married folks for a minute. All right, married folks. You married, right? How do you know you married? Oh, you looking at them, huh? <laughs> That's how you know you married. But sometimes you don't always feel, oh, good God Almighty. Some, come on, let's be honest now. Sometimes you don't always feel like that ceremony that you had. Oh, come on. Sometimes you don't always feel like 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah, have nothing. Come on, y'all. Come on, let's be honest now. But regardless of how you feel, there's a record somewhere in somebody's courthouse that you have been married. You might not always feel like you're married. You might not always act like you're married. But somewhere there's a record that says that you are married. For some of y'all might be in a dusty old corner. So, oh, good God Almighty. For some of y'all, the paper is brand new. But it doesn't matter. Somewhere there was a record that you have been married. Amen. What you telling me, Pastor? The same way that there's a record that you've been born. The same way that there's a record that you have been married, the Bible says that there is a record here in the Word of God that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have been saved. Amen. It ain't how you feel. Because can, can we be honest today? Some days I don't feel like I'm like I'm saved. Oh, but you the pastor now. Some some days I just don't feel it. Some days, some days we have doubts. And y'all looking so holy this morning. Come on, don't be so holy this morning. Some days you just don't feel like you are really a child of the living God. But then some days you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is on your side. Some days you can feel that little wheel moving down on the inside. Some days you don't. Nobody has to ask you. You'll tell anybody who will come around you that I. I know who Jesus is. All right, all right. But y'all, it doesn't depend on how we feel. Huh? Because feelings come and feelings go. Sometimes we up and sometimes we down. Sometimes we super Christian and then other times we just, oh, we just missed the mark. But isn't it good to know 
that even though I don't feel like it always, the record says that I am a child of God. That no matter what I go through, I'm still a child of God. It doesn't matter who's against me. Come on, y'all. I'm still a child of the living God. Not because of how I feel, but because of what his word says. You're still talking to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor it's not how you feel. It doesn't depend on how you feel. It depends on what the record, what the record says. And the record says that we can be sure. He who have Life has the son have life, yes. and he who does not have the son has not yes. life. Yes. If you got Jesus, the word says that you are saved. Yes. But pastor, you don't know what I've been through. You saved. Amen. You don't know what, what what's been done to me. You saved. But pastor, yes. I, I hadn't, hadn't been coming to church like you. You say, yeah. but pastor, I don't always do the right thing, say the right thing, go to the right place, but you saved. Amen. We might not feel it all the time. Amen. We might not act like it all the time, but yeah. the word of God says that if we've got Jesus yeah. in our hearts, yeah. then we have life. Yeah. Is anybody receiving that today? Yeah. Give God some praise for that right now. Two more points and we're done. The, the story is told of an evangelist who who uh, had been going and going, and he hadn't, hadn't spent any time with his son. So the, the, the fair was in town. So he promised his son, he said, son, he said, he said we're going to the fair. He says, I'll, I'll get some of your friends and, and gather them up, and I'm going to take you all to the fair. So he, he, he got six of his friends, and he loaded them up in his SUV, and he, and he took them to the fair. And when he got there, he bought them, bought them all tickets, bought a big roll of tickets. They went to the first ride. He, he rattled off six tickets and gave them to him. Right. He said, go ride. They got to the next one. He, said, he rattled off six more tickets. He said, he said go, hey, go ride. Mm -hmm. then, then they got to another ride and another ride. And he, he was giving off the tickets and told them, go ride. And then they, they got to the last ride, the Ferris wheel. And the man looked around. He started dishing out the tickets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he, he noticed that there was another little child standing there. And he, he said, well, he said, who are you? Where did you come from? And he says, well, sir, he says, he says I'm your son's new best friend. <laughs> he says, well, will you give me a ticket? And the evangelist thought about it. He says, yes, son, absolutely. I'll give you a ticket. Now go ride. Y'all, come on, somebody thank spiritually with me right now. Somebody thank spiritually with me. It's just like that when we get into the family of God. When you stand before God at the end of time, you're going to have to tell God, God, I ain't perfect. Lord, I ain't been all of that. Lord, I couldn't make it on my own. Lord, I tried sometimes and I failed. He said, but Lord, tell him, but Lord, I have a friend named Jesus, your son. He said, that well, now he's my best friend. So God, can I ride eternal life? You know what God is going to say? He's not going to turn you down like folks do. He's not going to look at you real. But long as Jesus was your personal friend, he's going to give you a ticket and say, go ride. Oh, does anybody want to ride today? Oh, all you got to do is just get in line and be a friend of Jesus, and God will give you a ticket. Not based on who you are. Not based on how you feel. But he'll give you a ticket and say, go ride. Yes. Last point, last point, last point. Yes. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, um, I was asked to, to participate in, in, in the Green County cook-off. And, and they, they sort of got the money because they didn't give me enough notice. Everybody else had notice to cook their ribs. I, I just had a few minutes to, to cook mine. But I said, okay, good cause. I, I participate anyway. So they took our picture. The picture was in the paper. And I didn't win, y'all. Uh, I, I didn't win. I didn't win. And I told them I'd be back next year. But when my picture was in the paper and I was I was out in the yard and, and cleaning out under the garage and, and, and a fellow stopped by and he, he said, Hey Rep, he said, I saw your picture in the paper. He said, I didn't know you could burn. He said, I didn't know you could grill. I said, Yeah, man, I do a little something, something every now and then. And and, and he looked, he looked under the garage and he saw my grill. Grill all dusty and got pollen on it and, and looking real one leaning over and yeah, that didn't look real good. He said, Well, well by the looks of your grill, don't look like you can do nothing. I 
I said, okay. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, well, go walk over to the grill. I said, now go now. And you have the grill. I said, now open it up. And he opened it up. He said, oh, yeah. He said, now. Yeah. He said, yeah, I believe that you can do a little something, something. I said, yeah, because it's not what's on the outside. It cast you down, but it don't matter what's going on on the outside. Tell them just take a look down on the inside. And if you got Jesus down on the inside, then you won't have to burn, y'all. You can do a little something, something. And at the end of time, people are going to look at your outside, but it's really what's going on on the inside. Or is anybody glad about that? That God will fix you up on the inside. That it doesn't matter what folks see on the outside. All that really matters is what you got going on on the inside. Is anybody glad about that? You glad we serve a God like that? Who doesn't look at your outside? Who can care less about your outside? But it's what you got going on deep down on the inside. And if you got Jesus, you can be saved for sure. Is anybody glad about that? Well, come on, give God some praise right there. Come on, give God some praise right there. Oh, if you thank God that your salvation ain't dependent on folks, the folks will cast you out. If you're glad today that your salvation ain't dependent on how you feel, come on, give him some praise. If you're glad that your salvation only depends on Jesus Christ, somebody give Jesus some praise right now.
Now see the world, the world, the world want to fix it another way. You got to jump through some hoops. You got you to pay respect to this one. Kiss somebody rain. Devil is a lie. Faith in Jesus Christ is the 